We're pleased to bring you the sixth episode in the History of Smyrna series. Today we're here at Old Rock School J.J. McWilliams Park. The park was home to Smyrna Rock School, the first public school in Smyrna from 1920 to 1976. Originally built to educate elementary through high school students, the Rock School was serving grades four through eight when it burned in 1976. The stories you hear today are part of the fabric of our community, weaving together the past and the present. This is our town and our history. We invite you to enjoy the history of Smyrna. Coon Victory. I grew up and lived around Smyrna my entire life. Patsy Brown. I grew up in Wilson County and I've been in Smyrna almost 61 and a half years. I'm Marion Appleton. I've lived here all my life. I'm Rick Wise and I came here with Seward Air Force Base in April of 1963. Donnie Holland, born and raised here in Smyrna. Uh, Bud Rakes, born in Milton, Tennessee moved to Smyrna uh, when my dad was working on building the Air Force Base, and I've been here 78 years. I'm Ann Odom. I grew up in Jefferson area of Rutherford County, and I went to school at Jefferson and then to Smyrna High School, graduated from Smyrna High School. Today our topic is education, and we have some educators here on our table today. And, and I was just thinking coming in this morning that uh, when I was in elementary school at Old Jefferson, where Miss Odom was there before me, we had four teachers. It was four classrooms with one teacher with two grades, and we had two people in the, in the cafeteria. So it was a staff of six people at the elementary school at Old Jefferson. This here would have been about 1949 or 1950. And I can recall that during, during my time. And uh, so Patsy, can you recall how your days were when you first started elementary school? Yes, it was Tucker's Crossroads Elementary and one through eight. And we had uh, three teachers. Um, two cafeteria workers. Um, great education. I wouldn't take anything for it. Miss out. I went to Jefferson School as well, um, a little bit earlier than he did. We didn't have a lunch room at the time. We took uh, a lunch. Uh, the um, we uh, had, of course, a classroom on each side with two grades in each class. And then there's an auditorium where we had programs and um, things in chapel and graduations and that sort of thing. Mr. Rake, you recall your elementary days? Yes. Uh, <laughs> we started this in the first grade and a uh, classmate by the name of Dick Johns and he, he and I went all the way through school together. We started and we went for six weeks and then they told us we weren't old enough or our age just didn't fall right and so they made us drop out and we started the next year but we had teachers in each grade. Uh, I remember my first grade teacher was Ms. Ward, Ms. Lowry was my second grade, Ms. Thelma Davis was my third grade teacher, Ms. Vera, uh, Ms. Coleman was my fourth grade and Miss Boyd Coleman was my fifth grade teacher. After that I can't remember who was what. They could remember me probably, but but I did uh, my whole time was at Smyrna High School where the one through twelve grades was were at that time. Donnie. You I, remember your elementary uh, schools? Yeah, we started at the old rock school and that was back in fifty Four, I guess, 54 or 55, and Coon was 
was my daddy's football player, played for my daddy, at, and Coach Rakes played for my daddy back in the early 50s, and I went one through 12 through, well, through seventh grade, we were at the Rock School, and then my eighth grade year, they built a new high school, which is the middle school now, and we moved over, had to walk all our books and stuff from the Rock School over to the new high school, which we really enjoyed having, and uh, graduated from Smyrna in 68 at the new high school. Rick, you recall your elementary days? Yes, I do, and uh, there's some inter couple of interesting stories. and I. I, was, I went to school in Phillipson, Massachusetts, a little four-classroom school. We had eight grades in four classrooms and four teachers. And uh, it, it was a good experience. And, and, and we left there. We went to a regional high school. And uh, that was in Templeton, Massachusetts. And I went there, of course, all the way through school. And I got graduated. And I was accepted to go to New England College in, in uh, New Hampshire. And I graduated from high school in 1962, and I went out and got a job, and I had a 1955 Ford, and I thought I was everything. And uh, my dad said, hey, summer's ending. You've got to get ready to go to school. You've got to get up there in New Hampshire and get this stuff. I said, Daddy, I'm not going to school. See, I was young, and I was the youngest and a little bit spoiled. And he said, yeah, you're going to go to school. And uh, I said, uh, no, Dad, I don't think I'm going to go to school. And he said, well, I've got to tell you what. You don't go to school. You don't stay here. That's old people, you know. And I said, I said, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I said, I'll just go join the Air Force. And he said, you can't do that, which he knew I could. He said, uh, you got to be 21 and you're 18 and I won't sign. So I went right down and signed up. And I came back and I said, Daddy, here I, I, got, I already signed up. He said, when you leave? I said, next week. He said, good. So that's how, that's how I got to Tennessee. And, uh, that in the Air Force. In the Air Force. And I got to Tennessee and... Uh, Came here in, in April of 1963, and you know I got here as quick as I could. I didn't want from you. I got here as quick as I could. So, uh, Miss Thee, you recall your elementary days? Yes, I attended Rosenwald, and it looked just like the building that's in the park, Rosenwald Park. And uh, we had three teachers, and one of the teachers was my aunt, and that wasn't good because she told everything <laughs> what on I did. <laughs> She reported it, and uh, I remember uh, Smyrna High. I was a big fan of the Bulldogs, Donnie Holland. That's what Aaron Green and Sam Green, them, I was their number one cheerleader. <laughs> well, we mentioned about schools, and during my time, I had to go from elementary school to the big city of Smyrna to the high school. And uh, Miss Oldham, I assume that you went from Old Jefferson to Smyrna High School. Where did you go, Patsy, from Tucker's Crossroad? To Lebanon. To the Lebanon yes. High School, okay. Mm -hmm. Then Coach, Coach Rakes and, and Donnie stayed at the same building. Did you have to swap buildings at uh, where you went from elementary to high school? Yes. You did? Yeah. And then uh, did you swap? We had to go to Murfreesboro. Yeah, you went to Murfreesboro. But back then, during our days, we had uh, here in Rutherford County, we had Walt Hill, Eagleville, uh, Las Casas, Kittrell, Christiana, all of them went from one through 12. We didn't have kindergarten then, one through 12. And the only one that I know that's still there today is uh, Eagleville. Eagleville is still one through 12, well, K through 12 today, which is, times have changed with the big schools. And, and I can recall my senior year in high school, 1962, we were the first class to have 100 in our class. We had 102 in our class and 94. 94 of us graduated. So, about how many was in your graduation class? 24. 24 was in yours. Coach Rex, you remember how many? About how many was in yours? 48. 48. So we're moving on up a little bit, Donnie. We had about 250. I think. Oh, you had a big one. Then 65. How, 65. How many was two, yours? Two. How many? 200. 200 in Murfreesboro. But, uh, I lost my train of thought. What I was going. Uh, Oh yeah, when did Smyrna and Laverne, when did Laverne come out of high school? 88. 1988. Do you, what position did you have at Smyrna High School in 1988? I was head basketball boys and football coach. Football coach, you were not principal at the time? No. Okay, 
the reason I asked that uh, about how many students was at Smyrna High School then? Do you recall? Well, when was I it nine through twelve then, or seven through twelve at Smyrna then? When you when they when the we moved? were uh, one through twelve at the Rock School. And then when we moved over to the school on Hazelwood, we were seven through twelve. And then that's when they built uh, Thurman Francis over there. So that's when the grade trucks changed a little bit. Now the largest class I had while I was a principal there was over 400 one. I, I don't remember which year, year it was, but there was 400 in it. Well, you became a principal in, in 70, 1973. 73, that's what I thought. You said 88 a second ago. I, I got confused about what he said because I knew Bud's been. I remember the day they, that the high school went to the new high school and left our building because the building was so crowded with 12 grades in one in the building. And uh, I remember what a relief it was when the high school moved out and we, we had more space. We mentioned the Rock School and, and the Rock School is where the Smyrna uh, Library is today. And it burnt, uh, it burnt in, uh, I had that down here somewhere, uh, 1976, 1976. I picked that up in Mr. Hoover's book about uh, when, it, when it burned in 1976. And then uh, I, what happened with when they burned? Where did the kids go to school then? You recall, Coach? How did they spread them out? The school well, was empty at the time, wasn't it? They was were, it empty? Not was being it? used, I don't oh, think, okay. at the time. All right. So that's the reason it wasn't I think the other schools had already been built. Yeah, because we went over to the Hazelwood High School at in 1960. 59, 60, yes, you're right, yes. And, and Donnie mentioned about walking over there with, with the books in her yeah. hand. Yeah, <laughs> moving day. Moving. Yeah, moving day, <laughs> yes. Who was principal in 88? Mr. J.J. Mike Williams. He was still principal? No, 88. When, 1973? No. No, 88. When, oh, no. I was principal then. Well, that's Mr. what I thought. Mr. Mike died in 1973. 73, okay. So you became principal? I became yeah. principal then. Did you continue coaching this? I coached, I finished the football season. I'd been coaching both sports, and then I quit coaching football and coached basketball for two years. Uh, and Mr. Mike Williams came and asked me what I – take the football team back over again. And uh, this was the second year of that. And when when he died, we was already in the season. So I finished the season and we our new basketball coach, Harold Schultz, I think it yes, was. Yes, yes. Harold and I were classmates at, at MTSU. He was from, I believe, Lawrenceburg or somewhere summertime. down. Summertime. Yeah, summertime. Yeah. Miss Odom, you, you got into education uh, I, to, to be a teacher. Back during your time, did you have to have a four-year education in order to teach? No. I went to school to MTSU two years and did my student teaching at the training school. Then got a teaching certificate and then that's when I started teaching at the end of that two years at Leanna Bethel School and I taught there six years and worked on my degree for BS degree. And then um, at the end of the six years, I transferred to Smyrna, um, well, which was high school and everything at the time, to first grade. Ms. Uh, Ward was the other teacher and Ms. Hugh was the first grade teacher there, but she didn't uh, teach that year. And so I took her place. Mm -hmm. Then, then after you left there at the Rock School, where did you go teach to teach? Did you coach uh, teach at any other when building? The, when the uh, primary school was built, then I went to the primary school. There at the corner of Hazelwood and uh, where the primary school yeah. is now. Yeah. Who was the principal there then? Uh, David Urey was the principal at the Rock School, and um, Mr. Howell or Terry Davenport. He was it's later, but not not. Uh, oh, uh, Fred Covington. Fred Covington. That's Fred right. Covington, yes. Yeah. yeah. He he was the principal when the uh, school first opened. 
the primary school first opened. Coach, with your with your teaching, I assume you taught it this Smyrna. You taught it. You start out at the Old Rock School, I guess, in seventh grade, teaching. Do you recall when you first started teaching? Where you taught? No, I started out at the one on Hazelwood. Yes. Seventh and eighth grade. Seventh eighth grade there. It wasn't any houses or anything, or uh, by the side of the street, uh, t what, what was called Todd Lane. There was a lane there, right? And that was it. It wasn't any houses at all there on that side of the, of the street. Yeah. yeah. And then you moved from there to to the high school yeah. there on uh, Sam Rita Parkway. Right. Yeah. Now Fred Vicky. Covington uh, taught English at the high school. And yes, Fred. he did, because he was, he was my high school yeah. uh, English teacher and uh, class, uh, what do we call them, class? Uh, I think he, he Home was, room teacher, yeah. He was the same year, I think I was. Yeah. And uh, he was from Eagleville, too. Right. D Donnie, you're, you're teaching, you started, uh, I assume you went to MTSU, correct? No, no, no went you to went to Austin, Austin B. B. That school down at Clarksville, yeah. yeah. In Clarksville, yeah. Yeah. You were a star athlete at uh, Smyrna High School. Uh, I believe Mr. Rakes was your uh, coach. Yeah, Coach Rakes coached me all the way from seventh grade all the way through high school. And Aaron Smith and Sammy Green and Harry Gill and Ed Fergus Davenport. and Davenport. Edwin Davenport. Some of your classmates. I, I assume, Coach, that he was probably one of your better linebackers you ever had? Yes, uh, actually uh, I consider Donnie the best player ever played at Smyrna High School all the way around. He he was uh, as nice as he could be and I always heard that Donnie always thanked his mother when they had a meal and all and of course knowing Donnie you probably wouldn't think that <laughs> <laughs> when playing football but he he was as nice a guy off that field, but he was like a madman when, <laughs> whenever he was in between those fences. And uh, he was a great player, along with some other players. Our, our 67 team was in 65 with two best teams I coached this morning. Did you go to the tobacco bowl with Donnie? Mm -hmm. We yeah. went to the tobacco bowl, bowl in 67. Yeah. And that was, we had two big bowls back then in Middle Tennessee. One of them was the uh, uh, clinic Bowl in Nashville and the Tobacco Bowl in Hartsville and, and Coach Rakes represented Middle Tennessee over at, at Hartsville. Did you recall who you played, Donnie? We played Springfield. Oh, Springfield. They had a big yeah. fullback that was 270, 80 pounds, and four yards and a cloud of dust. And they, they controlled the ball and controlled the field all day. And we lost that game, but it was a good experience. and. We we just was out man that day. <laughs> I drove a school bus to that game. I took the I don't know whether I took Smyrna band or I took maybe it was just some students from Smyrna yeah. that I was driving a school bus going to college at the time, and uh, that was not a happy day. Yeah, there was four or five buses. <coughs> the whole town of Smyrna showed up. Exactly. So. Well, back during our days, before we had too many things to do, you went to the football games and basketball games on Tuesday night and Friday nights, and that was about all we had. Uh, that was entertainment, but like you said, the whole town, the whole town turned out. Uh, Donnie, you went on to uh, Austin P. Why did you choose Austin P? Well, I'd gone to UT and sat on the bench for recruiting back my sophomore. Walter Jordan was recruited big time back then, and I got to ride on his coattail for two years. So, and they were looking hard after him, and uh, I. Went up there to all the ball games on Saturdays in '65 and '66 and '67, and uh, played in the East West All Star game that year in '67. That was 53 years ago. I just saw a picture of it yesterday. And uh, Austin P. Coach Lane was a head foot was assistant football coach up there, and him and Daddy were good friends together. And UT cut took took my books and pencils away and gave me like a three-fourths of a scholarship. Uh, coach, uh, who was a coach at UT that they 
fired in 67. Uh, majors? The majors. Yeah. Johnny Majors was the head coach there in 67. They fired him and he went to Iowa State. And Coach Majors called me and talked to me and said, you can come to Iowa State and, and play and keep your full ride to Iowa State. And I said, no, I can't go up there and play in the snow. It was too cold and I wasn't going to Iowa State. And Dickey came into UT and cut my scholarship a little bit. And Mama told me, he said, you got to have a full ride. We We can't afford to pay your books and tuition. So Alabama and Bear Bryant, but I didn't, at that time I didn't know who Bear Bryant was because he wasn't the stud that he was now. So uh, this was in 67 and he hadn't had his name recognized as much back then. But uh, Daddy died my junior year in high school. So Coach Lane came down and said, if anything happens to your mama, I'll personally drive you from Clarksville to home. and." That's the reason I cho chose Austin P to play my college football. That was, I played two years, led the conference in tackles my freshman year and was all OVC and my sophomore year, I was two tackles away from leading the conference in tackles my junior, sophomore year. And I hurt, got my knee blow, and blew my knee out my three games before the season was over and missed the last two and a half games with torn ligaments. So that ended my career as playing football. But uh, it was a good time and I loved what I did. And then I started coaching and re graduated and started coaching then. So that was in 73. I have to tell you, Mr. Victory, that Lebanon went to the Tobacco Bowl in 1957 and oh, I believe we won. Oh, you did? Yes, yeah. Blue Devils. You didn't play in elementary school, did you? Oh, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I didn't play. <laughs> well, back during that time, Lebanon was a powerhouse also when the coach. They had good basketball teams and good football teams also. Uh, I might add, too, uh, we're talking about the Tobacco Bowl. Uh, I had told the guys there at the Tobacco Bowl, they had a Tennessee State band, the Aristocrats, and they really put on a show. And, I, and also Miss Tennessee was always there. And I don't know if Donnie remembers it or not, but I told him if we were leading at halftime, we would stay out and watch the halftime. Needless to say, we didn't get to see the halftime. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a good experience to go. Yeah. Yeah, it was a big thing. I wanted to ask Rick a question. You came here in 63 okay. as an airman. As an airman. How'd you get that, that education that your daddy well, wanted you to have? Well, here's the thing. I, I came here in 63, and uh, I was here about a year. And, uh, and I got sh sent to Japan. And I was in Japan for two years. When I came back, of course, I was all over Southeast Asia at that time. And uh, when I came back, uh, I stayed here. And Uncle Sam paid my way through MTSU. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have not a problem with Uncle Sam. He did, did right by me. I drove a school bus for two of those years uh, and, uh, so that I could work and, and, and whatever. And uh, you, you came, what, what month in 63 did you come? April. Okay. And Bill, I came, came back, well, go ahead. Bill uh, was discharged. He got um, extended when the Bay of Pigs thing came up. He was supposed to have gotten out in May of 62, but he was. See, I, was just, I had just gone in then. Yeah. Did uh, you go to Vietnam? I didn't go to Vietnam. I went all over those places, though, because I went out to the VA to find out what I could do. And they said, well, you can't get anything in VA. You make too much money. That's after I retired. I said, make too much money. What that's got to do with it? You know? <laughs> but anyway, they said, uh, Gary Richmond told me, he said, go over and talk to this other place over there, and they'll ask you if you'd been to any of these places to, so that you could qualify. And uh, it was Uban, Udon, Karat, Takali, and Bangkok. Uh, Laos and I mean just everywhere over there and the lady said Hi, have you been to any of these places I said yeah I've been to all of them because I did I do TDY and work on airplanes so I was all over all over Southeast Asia flew over Vietnam but I, I never landed and uh, I had one boy that that uh, he said you get all the TD, well, TDYs you get to go all these places and he said I, I don't ever get to go why don't you let me go on this one and the sergeant said well if you want do you want him to go I said yeah, I don't care I just don't stay in Japan it was fine he went down there for about 
three weeks and he came back and that's when they had a big offensive down there and he came back and he said I hid under a rock all the whole time I was down there. he said you son of a gun said you sent me down there. I said I didn't send you down there. you said you wanted to go <laughs> so anyway uh, education uh, why, why did you choose education uh, Miss Oldham do you recall did you have a teacher that you favored that you liked? my father was a teacher your father was a teacher so I guess that's the reason I chose yes. that. Do you recall your first paycheck as a teacher? <laughs> Not dollar-wise, but it was very small. Very small. <laughs> very small. Very small. But you was glad to get it. Coach, you, do you recall why you got into education? Well, back uh, when they started football back here in 1950, I believe the year was, uh, Mr. or Coach Moody Bain, he let me be the, the water boy when I was in the seventh and eighth grade. And just something along that time, I said, that's what I want to do. And that's uh, pretty well, a lot of them wrote in my annual good luck with coaching yeah. and all some of my classmates yeah. in there. So that's, uh, that's how I got in him. Now, my check was because we got paid for 10 months only and uh, and you did whatever you could or do nothing during the summertime. And a lot of times you didn't make enough during the year to pay for the summertime, so you had to work in the summertime. And I had different odd jobs in there, but my check was $260 a month for 10 months, which was $2,600 for the whole year. And what year was that? 19 and 60, 61. 61, yeah. Donnie, you recall your first paycheck, and wh wh why'd you get an education? Well, my mom and dad both were school teachers, so after I blew my knee out in college, I ruined my football career that I wanted to be, so I decided I, I got a degree in education. So I came back and worked a year in a factory and better built my first job that I had and it just opened up in 73, and I pulled a, the aluminum for making storm doors and windows out of Better Built the first year it opened. And Mr. Howell, Pusher Howell, was at the middle school, and he interviewed me for a coaching job. And uh, he said, if you shave your mustache off, I'll give you a job. And I said, well, I thought about that. And Joe Shelton offered me a job at Eagleville to try to start a football program out there. So I push her how shaving my mustache. I said, I'm not going to shave my mustache off as stubborn as I am. So I decided to go to Eagleville instead of going to Smyrna it was the reason I wound up at Eagleville for 10 years, which was the best part of my life coaching at Eagleville. It was a nice community and the family and the people out there were just country people and they really got along with each other. They show up, showed up to all the games and that was their weekend was the ball games at Eagleville. But I started education because Pusher wanted me to shave my mustache off and I was hard-headed enough not to. So I wound up at Eagleville. But you mentioned Eagleville, and I can recall your days at Eagleville because I was working at Eagleville there at the, during that time. And uh, did you start a football program? Did you have a football program? No, we got back then everybody milked cows and hauled hay and cut tobacco. And I had 10 or 12 kids that could, could show up and play, and they didn't want to send us $100,000 to start a, build a football program out there, so I wound up coaching boys and girls, assistant boys and girls basketball in seventh and eighth grade in high school. And uh, so I wound up coaching the next 10 years, coaching boys and girls basketball at Eagle. But now, I don't believe you played basketball in high school, did you? No, I fouled out every game okay. in the junior high, so. And, and the reason I'm bringing that up, you were coaching there at Eagle. And I can recall you going, taking your Eagle girls to the state tournament. Yeah, I was head coach for five years, and four of the five years we went to the went to the state, and we got to the finals my, in '80 and '81. And '79, Smyrna was 
undefeated 28 and 0 the year they won the state and they came to Eagleville and we upset them in by one point in double overtime and Mr. Gill said later on that that loss probably brought them to back together where they won the state tournament that year they was reading their press too much and uh, we slid in under the radar and I had two big girls and Peggy Allen and Brenda that uh, held Miss Webb to eight points and she was scoring 30 or 35 points a game and yeah but but I can recall like I said I was working at the Eagleville store there then and, and that was the talk of the town because Eagleville small school going to the state tournament and Donnie was doing a tremendous job of work with Mr. Shelton Mr. Shelton who was the the coach there for many many years and later he was probably your principal I guess when you were coach I don't recall him going to the state tournaments any no they never got out of the region for yeah. 50 years that's the first time they'd ever been to the state tournaments was we went 100 those five years we won 134 games and lost 18. Wow. Uh, coach back during that he mentioned uh, uh, tournaments today they're classified according to the size of schools were they classified back during our time? It was just a wide open, wasn't it? Well, yeah, we were the 13th district here in Rutherford County and Lebanon, Woodbury, and who else was in it, Donnie? Portland, Portland last And all the Rutherford Fed. County schools. Oh, Rutherford County schools, okay. The 13th district. Yeah. I guess yeah, it yeah, was. Yeah. Um, yeah. Was. Uh, you recall why you got into education? Well, when I got out of the military, I got a job down at, in Laverne working at Cope, mm -hmm. and I was a welder. And I, I, w I went down to the uh, Berry Field. I was going to get a job down there, and they had so much paperwork to fill out. I just I had a suit on. I came back, and I stopped. I looked at this place. said, we're hiring. I went in. I had a suit on, and they looked at me, and they laughed. They said, can you weld? I said, yeah. They said, well, go ahead. Weld that right there. So I just picked up the weld, and I weld it right across just like that. And he said, you can well, can't you? And I said, yeah. I said, I put the suit on to go somewhere else, not here. <laughs> but I, uh, I worked there for a couple of years. And, and of course, I went to night school some at that time. And, uh, and I just, you know, I always wanted to be uh, around kids. So I, I went, I went uh, did my student teaching at Central High School and then uh, in industrial arts. And then when I uh, went to Central Middle, Mr. Tenpenny hired me. and. I taught uh, remedial math and industrial arts, and don't look at me like you know I can't teach. I don't know math, but anyway, I, <laughs> I did, and uh, uh, of course I went to MTSU, and it, I just wanted to be in it. I coached football at Smyrna, uh, at uh, Central Middle School with Butch Campbell and Bob Whisker, and uh, you know Donnie was talking about high school. I, I going to the district and going to. to this just brought me to my mind about going to the tobacco bowl because I was there and it was, wasn't a good day. But I had a bad day too because I dropped a fly ball with the bases loaded in the district tournament in Massachusetts when I was a senior in high school. And it was a sad day on the bus too when I went home. <laughs> you know, I could remember it just, I'd misjudge it and it was right on the glove, right on the web of my glove and it just rolled and I went and it hit the ground. Rick, what was the, uh the difference in you not wanting to go to school and then wanting to get an education. Working down in the back of that cattle truck, welding with a heliarch welder that you couldn't clean because it was had manure all in it. And, and I, I sat there and I looked up and I raised that mask up and I looked at the sun and I said, well, I, I, won't, I won't take exactly what I said, but I said, what are you doing here? So <laughs> I went, went back, finished school and, and did it. My daddy was right. I mean, he, he, he knew what he was doing. and, and uh, he would have never made me leave. I know he wouldn't, but at the time I thought he would. He made me mad, so I left anyway. <laughs> and, uh, but it was a good thing. Now, now Rick, Miss Oldham was at Smyrna, and Coach Rakes was at Smyrna, and Donnie was at Eagle. <clears throat> Where did you do your teaching? <clears throat> Central Middle School, and then I was principal at Rockville and principal at Stewartsboro. And there's a story about that, too. I was trying to get to be a principal. Patsy was on the, on the school board. She may remember it. And... Uh, they changed the rules. You, you couldn't, I can't remember exactly what it was, but they changed the rules. You had to go to the principal's academy to become a principal. But people before, it, they changed it in the middle. And so I went before the school board and I spoke and uh, 
Mr. Jordan said, I don't understand what you're talking about, because I love Dead Jordan. But anyway, he, Patsy said, I want to hear what Rick's got to say. And I appreciated that, Patsy. So I told him what I had to say, and it didn't get me a principal's job, but, you know, it did get me known better, and I did finally get a principal's job. You were, how long were you principal at uh, Rockvale? Thirteen years. Thirteen. Then you came to Stewartsboro? Then I, I opened Stewartsboro up. Everybody ought to open a new school. And I, I was fortunate, I got really to pick just about everybody I wanted as teachers, so it was really a good experience at Stewartsboro. And uh, uh, the, the, the thing that, you know, the, it was talking about the big thing in Eagleville, you said the talking of the, of the uh, basketball, them going to the state tournament. It was a big one in Rockville too, because I put Go Eagles on the, on the sign out there, and that, they were not happy with me. We were. You I, were. I you you remember sign. that didn't you? I remember saying it. Because that was a big rivalry, yeah. Eagleville and Rockville. Yes, it yeah. was. I have this man to thank for my six good years on the school board. Six good years. You of thought my it was life. four years, didn't you? The very night we were in. She thought it was one year. One year. <laughs> I said. I didn't we tell was, her difference. We, we were standing up there and and uh, getting ready to be in, 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 installed, and uh, I think it was I, I think it was Fred Hobbs said something about six years and Sylvia Beckman was standing beside me and I said what did he say she said he said six years and I said oh Lord I thought it was four <laughs> I, I owe him I will always owe him for that but she did a great job Pat and I were neighbors of course mm -hmm. most of you here in here know we were neighbors and so we I forgot who our school board member was at the time but they were retiring and so I thought Patsy is well known in the community. She could be re She could be elected. So I went over and I asked her. I said, "You don't have to do much." I said, you "Just have to go one meeting a month." And so, uh, and I said, "You and George." I said, "You got three girls in school. And you need to be be our representative." Mm -hmm. So she said, "Okay." So we put her name on the ballot. And of course, she won. And then she I, found I, out. I, I went. I was unopposed. That, that should have told me something. <laughs> Nobody ran against me. They didn't. That, it you were wasn't lucky. A, I had people run against me every time. <laughs> it wasn't a plum job, see. But didn't they open up Laverne and Smyrna during your time? Yes, yes sir. Did. Yes, That's sir. We did. But Patsy did a. She did a great <laughs> job. As, as <laughs> everything she get involved with. This lady right here. If anybody's ever running for office, they need to talk to her. She can get you votes now. I, it, it, she's got she got me votes, and I and I appreciate it. And I get her coffee every morning at the Y for you all do, she did do. for me. But you know what I think was sad that I wasn't allowed the opportunity to, to go to school, college, and then I maybe could have been a teacher because my parents wasn't able to send me to Nashville, and so very few of my classmates was able to go to college. And I can see the difference now. The kids go and they have the opportunity right. to go but right. anyway I met the Rick. That's as good a lady as I've <laughs> ever met right there. You had to have a master's degree also to be in administration right. so you couldn't just automatically move up. Move up. I don't say that some people probably did in some areas of Tennessee but technically that was uh, the rule. Requirement. Yeah. Well back in the day then the teachers I mean teachers just went to they didn't go to college to be teachers. Seems like mother said back in the day, they, they did, some of them had high school, I mean just grammar school education and taught the others. They did teach, some of them did teach. My, mm, mother, them taught. my mother lived in Northwest Arkansas in the Ozark Mountains and I, there's no way I could have passed her eighth grade test. She, she was born in 1902 and at 15, when she got out of the eighth grade, she went to Fayetteville which was 25 miles away to the university, uh, she and her brother. And they stayed there, they, I think, like three weeks. And after that, they got a teaching certificate. And she taught school. It's kind of getting back that way now because they can't get teachers. I know. Wow. It's sad. Sad. Miss Oldham, when you, when you first started teaching, uh, were you able to discipline the children back then? <laughs> Yes. And did times change before you retired or not? Was that yes. later on? Yes. They did? Yes. Not like it is now, but it was it was much stricter. Yeah. But well, I, Mr. Howell was pretty much of a disciplinarian, wasn't he? <laughs> like Mr. Rakes too. <laughs> discipline kind of changed. He's more politician than I was. <laughs> 
Coach, the, the discipline changed during your tenure as, as a teacher and a principal? Yes, in 1988, let's go back, 1960, when we moved over the school on Hazelwood, that's when we brought in uh, technical, vocational, like pushing vocational. And the uh, idea was to, like it would be now, to build people that could occupy some of the jobs that they needed. But I think the schools made a, a terrible mistake, and we were had to be included in that, I think. We got our, we put the kids in there that, weren't very good students and a lot of times they did very poor job in the class and the kids that were good students they didn't want to take those classes because they didn't want to be in classes that that didn't have some things said uh, positive about it so uh, if you could get them all the students to see some enlightenment to being in those classes way back then too, I think it would have fulfilled its job. They end up they end up taking vocation off of it yes, to keep I, the, from part stigma. Of the, part, part, well, part of that and part of the problem was that the, the state changed the rules. You, if you wanted to be college classes, you couldn't be in vocational too. And kids, some kids wanted to do both, but the, you know you have certain credits and you can't do both, so it kind of just made vocational go out the window. That's kind of the state's problem, I, I fault, I think. And like all the mechanics, we had, had that and the ones that wanted that the most were kids that had cars want to work on. That's right, work on <laughs> cars. What year, anybody know what year the kids were, the black kids were allowed to attend Smyrna High? Uh, 1969, the uh, 19 county schools consolidated 1969. in 1969. Well, we were about 66. We had, you talking about when we integrated? Mm -hmm. We integrated in 1963, uh, yeah. because L.B. Lewis's sister was the one that integrated us, and L.B. was the first African-American that played basketball, and he and a guy named Crawford came from Okadawa or somewhere over there where they, you know, had been fortunate enough to not have the problem that, we always seem to yeah. clop up with it. If, if adults had left everything alone, the kids get along. Exactly, exactly. So I, I was wrong. 1962 was, I believe, was when it uh, started. But it must have been consolidated. That must have been when the uh, Smyrna High School and uh, Laverne split. It was 69. Was that right? What, what year they split? 88 when we... 88. Oh, 88. You talk okay. about when we split schools? They 88. 88. Well, I picked up something in, in, in the book at 1969, County Schools Consolidated, so I, I don't know what that was. I saw it and I wrote it down. Uh, <clears throat> Donnie, you recall your discipline that you had, or did you have any problems over at Eagle? Uh, which week? Oh, which week? <laughs> <laughs> which week? No, they took, if you did something wrong or irritated something back then, you, you went to the office and every Monday, over the intercom, Coach Mr. Mack would say, uh, Donnie Holland, come to the office. <laughs> so those were the good old days when you could, you took care of everything in-house. We used to have a signal every Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Mack, he read off the, the people that was in detention hall <laughs> in the assembly. <laughs> Didn't miss many. <laughs> It made it a little tough coaching, trying to coach, and they was in the exactly. attention hall. Donnie, Donnie, Donnie had the patience of Joe about at Eagleville when he coached basketball, and I had spoke to him about that before, I know, but, uh, you know, uh, Joe Shelton w w wanted to coach, you know, so he would he, he'd be down there telling, trying to tell Donnie what to do, you know, because Donnie was winning all the games, and, and but that's the way Joe was. He, he you know, he... When it got tight in that last two minutes, he'd... He'd be on my shoulder coming in the middle, yep. and he'd right tell the, the girl something, and I'd say, do what I told you to do. And they'd get out there, and they did what I asked them to do, and we had a good bunch of girls out there and boys at that time. So, 
Rick, you recall your discipline when you first started teaching? Did you have any situations? <laughs> when I started, when I did start my student teaching, I, I, I learned something good. I had Claude Hyder was my, you knew Mr. Hyder uh, for Central High School. He was a metalworking teacher. And he came in one morning, he said, it's your day, go on in there and teach. And it was, a, it was a good class. It was about 15 juniors, 12 or 15 juniors in the class. It wasn't very many. It was advanced metalworking. I went in there and I looked around. There wasn't a soul there. I came back and I said, Mr. Hyder, I said, there's, there's nobody here. He said, oh, you're kidding. I said, no, they're gone. They're not in there. So he walked in and he looked. There was a big roll-up door in the back and he walked, he walked out and we went out and he looked up there and they were all sitting up on top of that thing because they were, they were getting, doing it for me, yeah, see. Right. And they were smoking. <laughs> and he just, he never said a word. He just went. <laughs> and every one of those boys, it was all boys class, they went in, they walked in that office and the first one bent over and he paddled every one of them. Now, if you'd done that today, You'd probably have to go to jail, but he did, and they, they knew it. They did it. It was worth it to them to give me a hard time. I, that's what I figured, and they were good boys, and after I saw them years later, they would say, hey, Mr. Wise, you remember such and such and such, such but uh, anyway, that was a long time ago. I, I can recall during my earliest years at Old Jefferson, uh, the teachers was able to teach. They taught the the reading and writing and arithmetic, I don't think they had a whole lot of paperwork to do to turn in at the end of the day and all that. Do you recall those days, Miss Oda, when you first started, did you have a lot of paperwork that you had to send in to, to the principal or to the office or school board? No, it was just, um, we had a book with about all the students' names in it. And of course, we marked the attendance every day, and I was supposed to. And um, then uh, at the end of the month, you did your your report, and then at the end of the year, you did the same thing. You took the, each month and did the yearly report, mm -hmm. and then after you had done yours, then you turned it over to the principal. That the principal finished it up. Then for, took every teacher's uh, record and put it together. Then sent in one report. But when you finished teaching, it was the same procedure, or had it changed since then? No, when I finished. Um, we turned in our absentees, but somebody else did the uh, paperwork. We didn't do the paperwork at the end. I can I can recall some of the teachers. The reason I brought that up, I can call recall some of the teachers talking about we have so much paperwork to do, we don't have time to teach, and that was the reason I thought that might have happened. No, we didn't have that much paperwork it, when I started out. Of course, as the years came on, you had a little bit more yes. from time to time, but. No, it wasn't. It wasn't all that bad any time. Coach, you recall your paperwork that you had to do? Was it? Did it advance? Did you have to do more and more and more as you finished? I usually try to sign that to somebody. <laughs> 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 was that guy named Mr. Miller? Yeah, David Miller. Yeah, he's a great one. But did was it a lot of paperwork from a, being a, a teacher to a principal? It's, and you know, I don't think very many of them used it. You could all put it in somebody's barn mm -hmm. hey, yeah. because they don't ever go back in it, right. you know. Now, politicians get back in it because they seem to know all about it. Yeah. That's one of our problems with education today. Too many politicians are telling the ones that know what they're doing how to do something that they don't know. But, uh, Wait a minute, Mr. Rex. I've been on both sides of that. I've been I a politician. <laughs> you knew more when you was a politician, didn't you? <laughs> well, it was easier to say it. <laughs> Rick, do you recall the paperwork uh, that you had as a teacher and as a, then as a principal? Well, we had to do we had to uh, do attendance every day and to turn it in, and everything had to balance. At, and it, when you turned your book in at the end of the year, it better all balance, or you didn't get to leave till you till everything was done right when you had your mark your attendance in the, in the thing. But later on. Uh, that was kind of taken away and, and it was done in the office. Uh, but yeah, I, I think uh, I think probably uh, that filling out paperwork for evaluations and all that kind of stuff got a lot a lot more difficult, you know. Of course, I was in the library and of course I didn't went, I didn't have an attendance. The, t the classroom teachers did their attendance. Yes. But I didn't uh, my last years. I didn't do any attendance at all. That was at Thurman Francis. 
As a librarian? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. you, that, I mean, you retired and from... And at the middle, at uh, primary school, right. I was a librarian at primary school as well. I tell you, I, some, I remember from Smyrna High School, when my daughter was over there, Miss Webb, I don't know what her first name was, Miss Webb. Miss Webb. Webb taught me biology in high school, and so when I went to parent teachers, you know, you went to meet the teacher, she said, Girl, I remember you from somewhere. I remember your <laughs> face. But she had me to sit in her classroom. You sit in front of me every time you come in here because I talk too much. <laughs> but I never would tell she her. She still does. <laughs> but I never would tell Miss Webb that she taught me. My daughter said, I'm going to tell her you was one of those students she had to put up front. But she, every time I'd go to meet the teacher, you know, she would say, Girl, I remember your face. I never would admit <laughs> I was the one. <laughs> I always thought that was funny, but Ethnet never did tell on me. My daughter never did tell on me. <laughs> Rick, you've been a member of the school board along with Patsy here. Do you recall your, some of your duties that you had, the responsibilities you had as a school board? Well, I was chairman for four years, which was, uh, uh, you know, a big thing. I, I got appointed to the school board the first, about a year and a half because uh, Cecil uh, didn't want to run again and he, he resigned. So I got appointed uh, by the kind of commission and then I ran twice. And then uh, I got to rest and uh, Mayor Esther called and said, uh, we, you know, we, we, we need somebody on the, on the council, you know, town, city town council and uh, would you do it, just take it for a year? And, well, it was more than a year, but it was, it was between the school board and that, I think it was like 12 years altogether that I had done whatever, but I enjoyed both of them. There was a lot of difference between the town council and the, and the school board. When I was on the school board, I knew about school issues, but I don't really know a lot about city issues, so I kind of listened most of the time and, and uh, you know, did what I could do to help, and, and I enjoyed both. Uh, so, and it gave me a little bit of money after I retired to go, so. I've been retired 21 years, longer than Mr. Rake's been retired. <laughs> School board was a, was a great experience. I kid him about it, but it really was a great experience. I think every parent ought to have to serve 30 days and see how, how things go and, and uh, really understand what, what happens up there. The first year I didn't say a word because I was, I was scared of Mr. Ed. I did not. I didn't talk. And then Carl Buckner said, you know, you didn't say anything the first year, so we can't get you turned off. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Jordan, talking about Mr. Jordan, uh, I, I think the world of him, world of him and he, he, uh, he was gruff, but he really wasn't gruff. Right. When I got, got appointed principal, finally, <clears throat> uh, it was, came down between me and, uh, uh, oh, who was a football coach at, uh, Central in Oakland. Uh, well, I can't think of it right now, but he was going to, he was in line to get that that night, uh, and I'll think of his name in a minute. Anyway, uh, when it got down, it was the third vote, Mr. you know, he, Mr. Ed was the third, the third vote that would get me the whatever, to, or the fourth vote to get me whatever it was, and he said, uh, 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 all right. <laughs> you know, I mean, so that was then. I, then I was I was principal, and that was uh, it was. I don't know it was a good thing or a bad thing. It was a bad thing at times, but it was a good thing most of the time. And, uh, he fought me over Ray Hughes. Ray Hughes is who I was trying to think about. They wanted Ray Hughes out at Rockwell. He fought me hard over those swimming pools. Called them the brown puddles. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because he, he, I thought we should have them. Smyrna Laverne should have them, just like Riverdale and Oakland did. But, uh, but he, I really came to respect him. He, he was, his bark was a whole lot worse than his bite. Yeah, and we got, we became good why, friends. Why he wanted to be chairman of the school board. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, uh, I, I think it looked look good on his tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Oldham, you, you started out teaching there in the, uh, TVs wasn't really popular then. We didn't have the, uh, the TV shows like uh, all those uh, educational programs that are there today. Do you feel like the students were smarter at the tail end of your teaching or, or the beginning because of the TV uh, 
whatever that name them shows were that's on TV. You're talking yeah. about the TV the, for the sc uh, at school or at home? At home. <laughs> you feel like the students was any smarter at uh, at your when you retired than you were when they started? Well, it was a little, it was a different perspective because. Um, I wasn't in direct contact with the individual students as much as, I mean, with a, a group, of, the same group of children as it was in the library. I was in, involved with everybody, and so I didn't have that contact to really know what they were. But the last year that you were in the classroom, could you tell any difference as far as kids being any smarter? I hadn't thought about it like okay. that, I guess, but. The Re reason I brought that up was what my personal, I feel like the kids are smarter today. I don't think they have as much common sense as back during our time because they're doing everything on the computer and all that. You go to a restaurant, it's possible that you might not get the right amount of change back unless it shows it up on that cash register. Uh, we, we learned how to count and read and all that back during those days, and they kind of got away from that, and that was the reason I, I asked that question. Do you recall, Coach, Will you think the kids or students were any difference as far as education-wise from the start to finish? Well, there are more opportunities now for them, but personally, I think if you were smart back then, you could be smart today, too, you know, because a lot of it has to do, I think, with how you're brought up. Not always, but I think there's a lot of influence, because a, a lot of parents, and it's sad, their kids don't have opportunity because they can't afford it. And a lot of times those kids end up with the wrong friends and they make more money doing something illegal than they can working. But personally, you know, of course I think the opportunity is better now because they got so many things they can do and work with, but uh, I've always had a feeling that a good one could be good any time. Yeah. But I think they're more knowledgeable today because if you don't believe it, ask your four-year-old grandson to help you with the computer because yeah. right. he can. They can. You, I mean, and it's, it comes kind of natural to them because they, they kind of grew up with it. And I, I, I you know, I, I struggle with some of that stuff. You some mentioned of them can't some, add things, but they uh, get on their computer. Well, they don't need to. They, got, they get it on the computer. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned computer. Do you recall when they came into the schools? We got them when, when Stewartsboro opened. We had a, a, a classroom, we had a, complete, a computer in every classroom and a computer lab. And that would have been uh, 90, 93, 92, 3. Do you recall, there. Coach, when they came to Smyrna? Were you, was it before you were principal? No, I don't, I don't think so. Either. Yeah, they probably did. had electric typewriters. Y yes, yes, I remember that. <laughs> Uh, Donnie, you recall when they, did they come I remember I had to take computer classes when I was at Smyrna Elementary with, with Esther. Yeah. <laughs> and I would go in the library and sit down and I would try to turn it on and open it. This was in probably mid 80s. And mine would freeze up or something every time I got on it and it would lock <laughs> up. And the teacher would say, Donnie, you can leave and go fishing. <laughs> you, you've had your turn today. But every time, I don't know if I had negative pulses coming in and whatever, but I locked my computer up 90% of the time when they were trying to teach me how to put my stuff on the computer and my lesson plans and all that kind of stuff. So that was the mid 80s. And Esther did all the paperwork and I did all the discipline. So that was, that was the, we swapped each other's out. So she did the paperwork and I took care of the problems and what few problems we had at Smyrna Elementary. So. Coach, do you recall when you were a student at, at the high school, did any of your classmates have cars? Maybe one or two. Right. Yeah. And that was I back in the middle 50s. I never, never, I never did think anything about not having one because Dad and them, you know, they let me use it generally when I asked, but didn't ask that much to use it. Cause then, you know, I used to think of all the places to go and when I got where I could go, I couldn't think of any. <laughs> <laughs> Donnie, do you recall when you were teaching, did many of the students at Eagleville have? No, it was a community, small community. And I, 
The teachers were mostly, and there might have been a half a dozen that, that might have had cars, but they worked on the farm and everybody had a rifle or a gun hanging in the back window where they'd rabbit hunt or bird hunt. And we didn't have any shooting problems back in those days or anything like that. And, but true. but far as cars go, the first time Daddy was coaching at Smyrna, and he'd get up in the morning and go to fix the fire in the gym. Back in the old gym, they had a coal burning stove down in the the old barn. Is it a tin barn? It was across from the rock school back then. And he'd get up in the morning and fix the fire, and he'd give you the keys, give Coon the keys to the station wagon to come back pick up mama and and the three boy dean and david and i to carry us to school in the winter time so that's the first time i remember daddy trusted coon so much that that's what kind of person he is so when he was 16 or 17 june probably 15 or 16 you would come and pick us up we wasn't but a block away on dudley street but you would come in the winter time and get us because uh, when it was cold and take us to the school when daddy was getting the fires in the burners to warm up the gym. There were some days back, we didn't have but one policeman in Smyrna, so I knew where he was most of the time back then. Uh, Rick, do you recall when you were at Rockvale in a rural area, did many of your students have cars back then? Well, that was just all of the elementary school, so they, they, didn't, have, they didn't have cars. Oh, that's right, then. you were at, it wasn't, it wasn't high school then. No, but we, we had enough cars from Eagleville to come over there in the afternoons, we'd have to run them off. Oh, is that right? You know, they'd, they'd come over, the buses would come between the schools and and uh, they would they would come down the, that old road running the walls boys and Donnie knows they have them all. girlfriends and boyfriends between those schools. Yeah, right. Uh, Patsy, I, I I've run out of questions. You have anything else you, you think we need to cover, or you, questions you want to ask? No, I don't think so. I just um, just really appreciate all this banter and, and information that you all have given us. It's just been, been really good. Enjoyed it. Thank you I very much. I think Marion should have been a teacher. I would love to have been one. I'd like to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't have wanted to talk to me. When I went, when I went back to my class, we've had a class reunion every five years uh, in Massachusetts. And, and when I went back after I was a principal, they could not believe that I was a principal. All of my classmates said, you are not, I, yes, I am too. <laughs> <laughs> I never was a teacher, but I was a lot of Sunday school teachers. You have anything you want to cover? You know, I just now thought of something. You mentioned there, uh, we mentioned the word PTA a while ago. I remember back during our time that PTA was a big thing. The, the parents really got involved with the school and the fundraisers and all that kind of stuff. Back during your later days of, as a principal, did the I don't know if they had PTA in high school. Did they have a PTA in high school? They tried to, but uh, f finally stopped having it because uh, most of them that were there were the teachers. Right, at the and, meetings, yes. Yeah, they had to be there. I guess Mr. Mike probably yeah. in his own way so you'll be there. But they cut that out. You know? yeah. Do you recall PTA at Eagleville? Yeah, we, we had that and filled the, filled the auditorium but with right, everybody, so yeah, back then they Somebody, all showed up. So. The rural areas would do that. Yeah, rural. I was, you think there was a different, it was a different feeling about being in, involved then yeah, than there is now. We used to have a program every, every month when we had a PTO meeting, you had to have students, a class had to have a program. And I think you find that too, like Coon said, in the, in the more rural areas there's or, there was when I grew up. There was always a lot of interest in in, in the schools and what was going on. And and uh, if you got disciplined at school, it was too bad. I never Absolutely. got that. Oh, you I, didn't have that problem. I never got. Oh, that. okay. I, I was afraid to, if I got in trouble at school, I was afraid to tell my daddy, and I was afraid not to tell him because he's right. going to find exactly. out. Exactly. <laughs> I I can recall daddy going down to when we was at Old Jeff, and he'd tell those teachers. He said, if they need it. You can spank them, and, and you know, it wasn't a whole lot of spanking, but it was some spanking that went on at Old Jefferson. Now, he didn't say it at the high school because he knew that Mr. <laughs> Mack would put that pal to you. Mr. Oldham, do you recall anything that we hadn't covered today that you'd like to cover? Well, I have a lot of notes here. I don't know. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, probably not necessarily. Uh, um, I, I want to say something about Miss Oldham that, that I failed to mention that that uh, up at uh, between Old Jefferson and uh, Walter Hills, a little community called Mona, and the Jerusalem Cumberland Presbyterian Church is there. And uh, how, how many years have you been attending there, Miss Oldham? Since I was born. So, 90, 90 years since she's been, 91 years she's been going to the same church there. She doesn't and, change. She, she doesn't change, no, she looks, as, she, she looks a lot like her mother to me. I can remember her mother. I have compiled a book of the history of my church. I've got one of those. Yeah, Mr. Rakes has one. Where can you get one? Where, where can you buy one? Can you buy one somewhere? I'm thinking well, I have, might be I have plenty of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, but um, that, that's, that's what I've, one thing I've done. And also, for the children for Christmas last year, I made an autobiography of my life. And uh, this is the, my home house where I lived when the lake came. And this is where I grew up. But um, the lake came, of course, and they had to move. So, but this is the original house. And so I sort of put together my life story. And so that was the children's and grandchildren's birthday uh, Christmas present rather last year. Are you still heavily involved with your flowers at home? Yes, I still raise flowers. Garden? Garden. Garden, still got all that. Yep. You grew up doing that, didn't you? Yes. Yes. Coach, I enjoy my flowers and garden and seeing things grow. Well, you, you look great to be 91 years old, and you did a great job today, and I appreciate you coming. Coach, you have anything you want to cover that we didn't cover or mention? No, not necessarily, but I would like to add that I think the amount of interest that you build up while you're teaching, to me, was worth everything I've had to do to be a teacher. If you enjoy being with the kids or with people, and that may be one of the problems today. We've got too many people that really don't seem to enjoy it. Or when they walk out of the school, that's it. Until they come back, they don't feel any. I'm not saying they all do. I'm just saying there's a lot. And we had some back then, too, because the percentage now is different in numbers, rather. But just the enjoyment of teaching. And, uh, and when I see your students I've had over the years and and they come up and talk to you, or maybe the ones that maybe cause a little friction in school or something will we won't let you know what they're doing now, and to let you know they were successful. And uh, to me, that's that's worth everything I did to be a teacher. Donnie, you have anything to cover well, that we haven't covered? I'd like to thank Miss Odom. She was a great friend of mine and my mom and dad when they were at Old Jefferson and teaching Miss Odom and my mother were really good close friends and talked together at Eagleville and I mean at Old Jefferson during the good old good days and I like to thank Coach Rakes for he was like my second father after daddy died he he tried to help me in every way he could and he's special to me so the town of Smyrna is a good place to grow up in. I have a, a yearbook that, uh, the first yearbook that was made for Smyrna High School. What year 1948. 1948. And this is it. Who was the principal when you were a student at high school, Smyrna High School? Ray Donald. Donald. Ray Donald, yes. Then who came after him? When, did Mr., when, is, when is Mr. Mack in that session? I believe Mr. Mack came after him. I'm not 100% sure Mr. about Donald that. Mr. Donald was at Murray School out there, too, and his wife was later on. Miss Donald was the principal at, at uh, Bethel, where I taught, and, and, and his, he was at the high school. Principal at Smyrna High School, yeah. Yeah. Rick, you have anything you need? Teaching, I, I wouldn't change anything about my teaching or, or being a principal. Uh, teaching is a thing of delayed gratification. You might go 
20 years and then somebody will come up to you and say, I remember what you did and such and such and it was great and it changed my life. And you, you'll, have, you'll have that every once in a while and it makes it, it, makes it all worthwhile. Yes. That, that's what makes it worthwhile. Yes. Cool. I'm not for, for sure when we're talking about the, the line of Mr. Mack. For some reason there was a, a guy named Mr. Moore and uh, I don't know exactly. I was thinking Mr. Mack came out to him. The reason I'm thinking that was that uh, uh, kids just walked out of class. I remember we was in elementary school, and my, my daddy told my sister that you better not walk out because that'll be the last one you walk out of. Yeah. And uh, but they just get up during the day and, you know, maybe at lunch, walk downtown, a bunch of them, and they come back, and he couldn't handle them. And I, I tell you what, Mr. Mike, he, he changed come, that, a different he? story. He yes, sir. I asked him one time how long it took him to realize whether you could handle a uh, school or not. He told me about six weeks. Six weeks. <laughs> I can recall, Mr. Mack, when I was there, probably a senior in high school. No, I was at the, I must have been a sophomore because I was at the Old Rock School. And he, for some reason or another, I was in the in the auditorium, and he said, he motioned for me to go with him, and I went with him. He went out to the elementary side of, of, the, of the school, of the rock school, and he could see some kids in the classroom, I mean in the hallway, and he could call them by name then, and how he did that, I, I don't know, but he was good at remembering names. Could you do that, Coach? Could you, would you know most of your students at the, of course, it got so many there when you was at high school. Not as it got bigger. When I became principal, we had 500, and when I left, it was 2,000. Oh, yeah. Of course, I, I don't know. I, he couldn't he couldn't discipline in the way that he did back then, today, because times have changed, and parents' attitudes have changed a whole lot. Like I mentioned before, my daddy, when he dropped us off of school, said, if they need a whipping, you whip it. That don't happen today. I don't know. Yeah, you can still paddle them, but you got to have a signed note for them to be paddled. But what's bad is the ones that need paddling, their parents wouldn't sign for you to touch them for whatever reason it be. And the ones that, that, that the parents allows it don't need paddling. <laughs> and I don't know. I'm not saying a paddling solved, but i tell you what it did to me. Mr. Mike Williams got a hold of me one time when I, when I was uh, – Matter of fact, Miss Sanford, the librarian, she sent me to the office for talking. And when we went in the door, Mr. Mike would let you sit about two hours before he ever come in to say something. And you pretty knew what he what he was going to do when he got there. You know, when he walked in that door to us, he said, which one of you boys want it first? I said, he didn't even let us explain what we're doing. <laughs> I, got, I got one more thing to say about Mr. Rakes. When Cole was in high school over there. I don't know, he was freshman or sophomore. He maybe a sophomore. And he came home one day and he said, boy, I was, I was scared today. And I said, what happened? He said, well, he said, Mr. Rakes called over the intercom and said, Cole wanted Cole when we come to the office. He thought, what did I do? What did I do? said, I walked in and Mr. Rakes said, Cole, how'd you like to work in the office? And he said, oh, Mr. Rakes, I'd love to work in the office. <laughs> Today, our topic of course was education. Uh, we had four great educators in here and we appreciate uh, Miss Ann Odom and Coach uh, Bud Rakes and Donnie Holland and Rick Wise representing different eras of education in Rutherford County and especially this morning. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.